What's up, fish heads? Welcome back to the only fishing podcast that goes behind the scenes of the fishing tackle industry and answers your questions about the latest gear straight from the source. This is North 40 Fish Live. All right, so we're live. This is this is called North 40 Live. This is our second one. Um, we're live on Facebook and we're live on Instagram. So you know, definitely follow us on on uh, those two things and ask oh, us any oh, questions. Um, that you might have. Today we have Ted Moody. He represents Eagle Claw Fishing. He also represents uh, Frog Tog in Northland, but for today we're going to mostly focus on uh, Eagle Claw. But if you guys have a question about uh, Northland or Frog Togs or what other brands are you doing? Kings Camo. Uh, oh, we do Kings. Yep, you do Kings. Uh, then you guys also do Live Target. Yep, Live Target. And that's that's pretty much it. Oh, Live Target, that's a good one to talk yeah, about. Oh, yeah, I love Live Target. Um, so if you have questions on any of those brands, um, this is kind of like your guys' chance, um, our customers' chance to kind of see behind the scenes how it happens at the North 40 office. And Fred comes or uh, Ted comes in here and kind of works with our buying team to assort our stores with what products we carry and uh, works on marketing campaigns with uh, myself. And then we also have Calvin here today who uh, works in and out of the stores. He started in the Sandpoint, um, the Sandpoint Fly Shop and then became an assistant manager. He ran his own sporting goods store prior to that. And now he's kind of like our operations guy for all of our sporting goods efforts in all of our stores. So he travels the stores and um, helps with merchandising and training and product assortment with the buyers and marketing with me. Um, so. Um, yeah, that's kind of what we have today. So please, if you guys have questions, those of you guys are joining us on live on Facebook or Instagram, feel free to ask those questions live and we'll do our best to answer them while we have Ted and Calvin here. Excellent. Um, so the, the kind of the, the first question, just because a lot of people that are watching probably don't really know you since you're not usually facing the customer, sure. um, is who are you and, and what is, and not necessarily a, uh, industry-wise, but what's your fishing background? Sure. Uh, I'm Ted Moody. Uh, I live here in Montana, just south of uh, Missoula. I, uh, much like uh, most people, I started fishing with my, my dad and my, my grandfather. I grew up in Colorado. And uh, once I uh, started kind of a real job back in the early 90s, I decided that I didn't like the stress of that, so I wanted to get into uh, something I enjoyed and I was passionate about. So I uh, moved to Montana and I started working in fly shops uh, back in the early 90s. And that's my passion, you know, hunting and fishing is my passion. Uh, I love the fact that we get to talk about fishing and, and hunting on a daily basis. What was the first fly shop you worked for? Dan Bailey's oh, cool. in 1995. I worked yeah. at oh, Dan Bailey's. Oh, that's Bailey's. so typical. Livingston, right? <laughs> yeah, it was Livingston. And I miss Livingston a great deal. That's cool. And I miss the fishing around there. But yeah, it was uh, it was Dan Bailey's, uh, obviously rich in history. and Yeah, for those of you who don't know, Dan Bailey's is probably the most, one of the most original fly shops in the country. It's been yeah, a long so, time. Absolutely. And so uh, I just continued my passion, moved across the country a few different times, uh, doing what I, I do. And then I was a buyer for quite some time in the Midwest. And then 10 years ago, I started repping. Awesome. Um, great. And just because, Calvin, you haven't been on the show yet and not everybody knows you, although some people know you from our media, <laughs> what can you tell everybody a little bit about your background and your fishing kind of background and experience? Uh, yeah, I, I grew up in uh, eastern Washington, just like Ted. Um, grand, grandpa was the one that taught me to fish and yeah. my dad and it was great you know I still remember my first fishing experience fishing for crappie on this little pond and ever since then I was completely addicted so I uh, got a passion for steelhead fishing I probably I don't know caught my first steelhead when I was six or seven years old and ever since then kind of in the pursuit of anadromous species so I love steelhead fishing like swinging flies um, travel all over the world doing it so Loving my job here at North nice. Forty. Cool. And I, I know, I know, Ted, you work for like a group that represents a lot of different brands. Sure. So those brands switch from time to time. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. But uh, for today, you know, we're talking about Eagle Claw. I don't know how, how much you can elaborate, but can you kind of elaborate? Like, what's the background of Eagle Claw? Um, a lot of people just know them for like the traditional snell hooks and sure. stuff like that. But like, yeah. can you give a little bit of back? There's when I go to the Eagle Claw background yeah. at like yeah exactly <laughs> at like iCast. I start to dig in a little bit deeper. There's a lot more to Eagle Claw than kind of what people see at most retail stores. Yeah. There's a lot of history there. Yeah. And then a little bit like maybe why you guys have chose to represent them. 
Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the group I work for is called Sokol Associates, and they have quite a history themselves. It's a Midwest company based out of St. Paul, Minnesota, and they've been around for over 50 years now. So uh, they're no strangers to this game. And when I came on board with them 10 years ago, they already had the line of Eagle Claw. And Eagle Claw is very unique. They have a lot of history. Uh, back in, I believe it was 1920, uh, they were actually a fly tying company. Uh, they were well renowned for yeah. yeah for making high quality flies, uh, and it was at the time it was called Wright and McGill, and the as the story goes, uh, Wright and McGill were up on the Colorado River fishing dries to rainbows, and they were having problems hooking up, and they kept losing fish and losing fish, and uh, Drew McGill went over to the bank and sat down and was watching an eagle on a perch and he sat there and contemplated I wish I could figure out a way to make a fish hook like an eagle's talons and so he sat there kept thinking about it and pondering it and then he started tweaking his hooks and went back and caught a couple fish and then they went back to the office and over the next five years started designing fish hooks and so it's of course, story. of course, they called yeah. the name. They need to tell the story more. That's yeah, right. they they called it Eagle Claw, of course, and that Eagle Claw was developed then and and founded in 1925. Wow. And since then, uh, we've come a long way. We do a lot of different things. Not only do we do fish hooks, we do rods and reels, but we truly are a fish hook company, mm -hmm. and that's what we base ourselves on. Uh, one of the unique things is we're the only American-made fish hook company um, out there. So, as you know, and, and with lots of industries, it's getting harder and harder to find things that are American made, mm -hmm. especially in the fishing industry. So, that's one thing that we really hang our hat on is that all our hooks are American made in Denver, Colorado. Wow. Wow. That's awesome. Yeah. So, that's kind of the story. Yeah. Yeah, you definitely don't, like, think about all that when you look at the Eagle Claw snelled hook packages at the yeah. gas station. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. At every well, gas station. yeah, exactly, exactly. Out of all the new stuff, you, you met with Paul earlier today. Yeah. Out of all the new stuff, and I see you have a couple things on the table that you brought in, but what are you most excited about with what Eagle Claw is bringing to the table right now? We're doing a, a lot of exciting things. It's every year it's an evolution, you know, you know, every year we go to ICAST and, and we think there really can't be anything new that's going to come out this year. But surely enough, something new comes out, whether it's a style of fishing, a bait, a rod, hooks. Uh, one thing that we, we have had an evolution of, if you will, is hooks, uh, starting back with the, the standard Eagle Claw. Um, and then we went into laser sharp and now we go into trocar hooks. And the neat thing about trocar hooks, and that's a, a line that continues to evolve for us, is trocar is from the medical industry, it's from the surgical uh, side. And what it is, is uh, if a, a doctor needs to administer a very large shot, he asks for what is called a trocar needle. And the reason why they pick that is because the way it penetrates, it's Learning very a lot right now. It's, it, <laughs> it, it penetrates very easily. So we went to the surgical industry and we said, we think you have something here. Can we take this and hopefully design a fish hook off of your idea? And so we worked with the surgical industry. We built our first machine about six years ago, and now we have three machines up and running. And it is without a doubt the sharpest hook on the market. And are they also made here? They're also made here in Denver, yep. Absolutely. So three uh, machines constantly run round the clock. Uh, it's the the thing about the hook is the point is it's basically three sided. So you have basically what would be three razor blades on the point of the hook. So it's just gonna have a better penetrating power. And we did uh we did like a little while ago we did a a video for North Forty Fly Shop and it was about like the difference. Uh, I'm kind of switching topics now. Oh sure no. Um, uh, with the fi new fiberglass rods that you guys are bringing, in, bringing yep. back, yep, um, kind of the traditional styling. We we did a a video a while back with the fly shop on old fiberglass rods versus the new ones, and that actually got a lot of attention. It's one of our yeah. highest uh, viewed um, videos that we've done. Yes. Um, but can you tell us a little bit about like the new crafted in glass stuff? I know we have the fly rods and we have the gear rods in the store now. Correct. Um, yeah. And so far we haven't told talked a lot about that to our customers but it's pretty cool story i thought one yeah. of the coolest things i was i don't know if you're in the booth with me but i was really no excited i wasn't that, I, I wasn't <laughs> yes, <you were. laughs> yeah you know we uh we 
obviously when we started making rods, uh, glass was where it was at. Mm -hmm. uh, bamboo and glass. We started with bamboo, uh, but then we went to glass and then the advent of graphite came along and then obviously as you two have probably seen in the past seven years, this resurgence of fiberglass. and. And we really saw it on the fly side of, of business. And we realized that there was a lot of people, not only on the fly side, but also on the conventional side that missed the old fiberglass, missed the feel um, of the way fiberglass feels in your hand. Uh, they're very smooth casting rods. Um, there's a lot of history behind them. They're perfect uh, in, in the fly rod aspect of roll casting, um, smooth, easy casting rods. So we designed what was called crafted glass and it's uh, it's a, a golden honeycomb color. Uh, it is traditional in all the sense of the words, word. If you could just take a, a time warp back to what would be in 1950, 1960s, this is yeah, what you can go to an antique store and find that sweetheart glass emblem. Exactly. <laughs> and so we decided to, to launch it. We launched it in a three weight and a five weight. The three weight is is a, a very sweet casting little rod, and then we did a full line of conventional also for the conventional guys out there. I noticed the grip's a little better on the new ones. Yeah, yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Uh, all yeah, of them are. Ones were, I even said that in the video that we made. It's like I don't think they sanded the cork at all. They just slid the rings down. <laughs> the they, yeah, they're, they're polished up now, but uh, it, it's a. Uh, there's a definite, and it, one of the coolest part about it is the price point. You know, you can get into a crafted glass fiberglass rod, fly rod for 50 bucks. Uh, the combos in the conventional side are right around 60 bucks. So it's a, it's a, it's a neat deal and it's, it's taken off, you know, we were having a tough time keeping up at this point, but it, uh, it's taken back off pretty good. Cool. Yeah. You've seen the, the new stuff in the stores, right, Calvin? Yeah. It's what awesome. do you think? Uh, people love them for sure. Even the, the conventional rods, like the trolling rods, people are really excited about, sure. especially running on downriggers or for well, yeah, because you see St. Croix, co kokanee fishing, and all that. St. Croix came out with one, a similar new, you know, uh, throwback rod, all fiberglass, and they're they're a couple. How much is that rod? Two fifty. Two fifty. Two fifty. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, it's cool to they, be able to get that for a lot less money yeah. and try glass at least and get sure. into it. Like awesome. a lot of these people that are making the crafted fly rods and stuff, they're really cool and they're they're finished beautifully. Um, but you can get, at least get that traditional feel here as an entry level into your first fiberglass rod for a lower price. Yeah, yeah I'd say one of the coolest aspects too is when you bring kids into fishing, like yeah. trolling, fly fishing, anything. It's like it's a perfect starter, perfect starter rod. Yeah. Cool. Um, so just uh, switching topics a little bit again. Um, one of the things we wanted to <laughs> one of the things we wanted to talk a little bit about is just like just fishing in general. Sure. So you have a pretty big fishing background yourself. I know you fish a lot for like bull trout. You fish around Lincoln area a lot. Uh, you fish in Montana and you fish in Canada. Um, so what? You can't, what you can't target bull. Trout I fish the bull trout in Canada. Yeah. I just want to <laughs> clarify that for the world out there right now. Yeah. Well, I was. Those three weren't necessarily in the right order. Yeah. <laughs> um, but what has been your most epic like fishing moment that you've had? Ever. Ever. Uh, that's a, that's a good question, and there's obviously there's probably a lot of them, but I have I have two that come to mind. The first was probably not that long ago. I when my little boy was four, and he caught his first fish, mm -hmm. and landed it, and, and I wanted to hold it. Was a pretty cool. Uh, the picture's pretty amazing because the smile on my face is far bigger than the smile on his face, <laughs> and, and it's a whitey. And so I mean that's how excited I was. But the probably the most epic fishing personal moment would be Costa Rica I'd imagine I uh, banged three sails on fly in like three hours and really? I was just wow. exhausted oh, yeah so I had like three hours left of the trip and I said yeah I'm done just I want to so go is in that on like the southern side of Costa Rica uh, yeah the Pacific, well, very southern Pacific side. Pacific side yeah uh, close to Port Jimenez south of the Guanacaste kind of correct island area yes yeah, nice. and it was it was awesome, and that but that was after seven days of getting skunked, and then I just banged three in a row, and it so was cool, huh? It was awesome. Yeah, I'm gonna try that, Sam. Yeah. yeah, we haven't done that yet. No, we haven't. You oh, there's something you guys haven't done. No, I've never chased. <laughs> oh, really? That's surprising. I'm really there's surprised a lot on by it. <laughs> yeah, sure. I, I need to get on your list so I can go. <laughs> you're yeah, you're invited. Right, Calvin? Yeah, got a Christmas Island trip coming up. Yeah. Uh, what about you, Calvin? Oh man. Probably one that comes to mind, what was it, probably 2005, 2006, um, 
Well, there's a couple that come to mind of a place I can't talk about, so I'm not even going to bring those up. But 2005, 2006, I went up to the Sustad mm. River and uh, fished at a lodge up there called the Suskina Lodge. And we were fogged in for like two days and smithers, so we couldn't even get in. So I was chomping at the bit to get there. And finally, we made it in and fished. And my dad and I, the second day out, it was fresh snow on the ground. And we went up on the Skeena, just above where the Sustad dumps in. And nobody had fished in a couple of weeks and I think we had like 17 or 19 wow. steelhead or something like that. I had back to back 40 inch hens on the swing. It was just pretty ridiculous. That's awesome. <laughs> but my dad was just, you know, like you, he just gave up, he just sat in the boat and yeah. ate snacks. It's not, it's not gonna get any better. <laughs> he was that. Done, yeah. 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 yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, it was killer. All right, so then uh, one of the, kind of the, to wrap this up a little bit, um, sure. One of the final questions that we just kind of want to ask everybody, whether it's in uh, our outdoor categories or our farm categories or our ranching categories, is um, we know that you guys bring a lot of experience to what we do at North 40. Um, so is there one piece of like guidance or advice that you would give to people trying to improve their fishing experience? And it could be for a beginning, beginning person, but also could be for somebody that's been fishing for a long time that maybe sure. they just, they get too caught up in the same way that they do things all the time yeah you know it, fishing much, much like uh life is is you can always learn and you're never going to know it all and and that's one of the cool things about fishing is i think every time i go out i sit there and i'm like wow i didn't even think about that and i try and develop something new or or come up with something new i think one of the biggest pieces of advice i would say is that ask you know it's 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 an intimidating uh, sport in some aspects, and it you get kind of claustrophobic and you and you don't know. But the more questions you can ask in places like North Fort, you guys are very accommodating about bringing all levels of anglers in and, and getting people going and being out in the media. But ask the questions. Uh, the one of the favorite things I love to do is if I meet an older guy that I know has fished a lot. I just love to pick their brains mm -hmm. and see what I can get out of them. Even if, obviously, I, I love to fly fish and that's that's And a lot of, of times their, their answers are like just short things and you have to piece it together. <laughs> yeah, you have to piece it together and you just have to keep grinding on them. Mm -hmm. But yeah, even if it, you know, I'm a fly guy, but even if I know a conventional fisherman has fished this lake, I mean, you are you can garner a lot of information just from anybody. And so my biggest thing is don't don't be shy ask the questions go into north 40 ask them uh you know they'll tell you they want you to come back to the store and they're not going to send you a direction that's that's not accurate so just yep. ask that's kind of that, for sure once you can learn to ask and keep asking and friend some people it just gets a lot easier yep that's a that's a simple tip that a lot of people just don't do yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a really yeah. easy way to get better sure um great well if you guys are listening to us on the podcast um we'll make sure that we link up these different things that we talked about during the show in the show notes um below and i think that's uh unless calvin do you have anything else that you want to ask ted or about eel claw or anything no i'm good man you did it awesome <laughs> <laughs> well ted uh thanks for joining us for our second ever north 40 live thank and, you uh honored yeah. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for joining us on yeah. Facebook. Thanks, guys.